I became interested in antique tools in about 1983. My interest narrowed to Stanley tools in approximately 1985. At this time, I was fortunate to become acquainted with Roger K. Smith and purchased this book entitled Patented Transitional and Metallic Planes in America, 1827 to 1927, published by the North Village Publishing Company in 1981. This became a long period of communications and Stanley tool purchases with Roger. I vaguely remember him telling me that my plane purchases were going towards supporting his children's college experiences and expenses. Roger was extremely helpful in my passion of learning more about antique planes, uh, their use, and history. The history of the Stanley Tools Company is well documented, and if you go to the internet, uh, you can find all kinds of useful information about how the company evolved and how its many selections of tools um, became available. This is a uh, trademark that I have on one of my Stanley One planes. This particular one is the V-shaped logo. Uh, that is a Type 11, according to Roger K. Smith book, which was in use from 1910 to 1920. Uh, you can notice also that there's a rectangular spring on this particular lever cap. That uh, was in use uh, around 1869 on. Uh, on this particular plane, there's also what appears to be a bee casted on the frog and lever cap, which was an unknown foundry mark that was used between 1899 and 1902. Now, this predates the 1910-1920 uh, mark that you see on the uh, iron in this particular plane. Uh, the prices of these planes are all over the place. Uh, they range from $1,000 up to $1,800, $2,000, depending on the vintage of the plane and the condition. Uh, there are some counterfeits out there, so you have to be careful. One of the things I'm going to do in my next uh, video is to go over some of the uh, comments that were in a letter that uh, Roger wrote me in January of 1985 on how to care for these planes and recondition them. And I think it'd be interesting to share that with you. He had some really good suggestions on that. Here you can see the, uh, the B cast into the lever cap and a previous uh, slide showed the one. Now this is the sole of the plane and you notice that underneath the uh, handle that the sole continues on as a continuous uh, piece of metal there. On the next plane I'm going to show you there's actually a step down there uh, before it, it goes under the handle. And so it's a little different uh, design. If you look at how the, uh, the wheel and screw are connected here for the iron adjustment. You can see that it's a horizontal screw. Uh, one of the things you'll see on some of the uh, Confederate ones or the counterfeit ones is that they are uh, diagonal. This is the uh, logo that's on the other Stanley number no. one plane that I've got. This trademark is a 1907 to 1910. Uh, it has a lot of the similar features as the previous one, except for the fact that uh, uh, it doesn't have the casting marks that the previous number one had. According to Hans Brunner uh, Tools website, uh, quote, without a doubt, the most famous of all Stanley planes, never had a lateral adjuster, never had any number markings. Some models have a B or S cast into the bed. Others have no markings whatsoever. Early types have a beaded rosewood front knob. One of mine has that and the other one doesn't and a short handle spur. Later types have a slightly longer handle spur and a lever cap embossed with the Stanley name. Production areas, or excuse me, problem areas. Fork and depth adjuster uh, sometimes are damaged or not working. Uh, they'll find other areas of the plane that can be chipped. And that's kind of the bulk of what uh, Hans uh, Bruner explained about uh, this particular plane. If you go to the uh, Wood Magazine, issue number 1, September, October 1984, it says, quote, Stanley tools represent a major category of collectible tools and can form the basis for awarding 
and, uh, and stimulating hobby. One of the most desirable of Stanley tools for the collector is the diminutive Stanley number no. one bench plane. This tiny five and a half inch long plane uh, poses some interesting mysteries for the collector. First, what was it used for? And then the article goes on to explain that, uh, that the author believes that this plane was used in elementary schools basically for use by uh, children to learn woodworking and to learn the care of planes. Now, why is it so scarce? In the 73 years that the Stanley No. 1 was manufactured, there were thousands of them made. Well, it turns out that uh, the mystery, even though it may be hypothetical in terms of theory, is that during the U.S. involvement in World War II, uh, many of the shop teachers were uh, drafted into the military. A lot of the school uh, woodworking shops closed down, and there were a lot of drives that went on for paper and fat and things to help with the war effort. And one of those was a metal uh, drive to uh, basically uh, accumulate scrap metal that could be melted down and used. And it's believed that a lot of these planes may have ended up uh, being melted down and used uh, for military purposes. At least that's one of the theories. Uh, this plane, uh, these two planes that I have are in uh, what I call excellent condition. Uh, maybe Roger would call them good plus, uh, but they, they appear to be uh, nicely cared for. Uh, not a lot of damage, uh, not a lot of wear. Of course, they may not have had a lot of use. Uh, if they were found in elementary schools and used by, by children. Uh, I haven't used these planes. I know some uh, woodworkers have been known to take these number one planes and basically use them like a block plane. Uh, but I've kept these in my collection basically undisturbed and uh, you know hope they'll be able to pass this on to my kids one day and, and they can continue this collection. Uh, next time, I'm going to do a video on the Stanley Number no. 2 plane, and I will also read the letter that I got from Roger K. Smith describing the, how to recondition not only the metallic planes, but also the transitional planes that have wood bodies. Uh, he had some really good suggestions, and I think it's worthwhile to pass that on. Uh, so this is kind of in memory of Roger K. Smith. I understand he passed away some years ago. We'll miss him. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I look forward to talking to you later.